Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to look to the past and delve into Harley's Project Nova. This was the company's experiment into the V4 that never came to fruition. The company invested millions developing the bike that never made it to market. So our story begins back in the mid to late 70s, when the Harley-Davidson Motor Company was still owned by AMF. Project Nova, as it came to be called, started with secret meetings between the company's top management and engineers. The idea? An all-new, liquid-cooled, high-performance bike. At that time, Harley felt that it needed something to complement their V-twins. Emissions regulations were getting tighter, and the Japanese manufacturers were starting to come on strong. Harley figured it would need something to compete. As a project like this would stretch Harley thin, they began to look for outside suppliers. And they looked at three. AVL in Austria, Ricardo in England, and Porsche. Harley ended up going with Porsche as they felt they had the experience, production, and development to get the project done. A 60 degree V angle was chosen for the engine. They also wanted the motor to be a stressed member of the chassis. The stroke remained the common 58 millimeters but used alternative bore sizes. This gave V-twins of 400 and 500 cc, V-4s of 800 and 1000 cc, and V-6s of 1200 and 1500 cc. These engines would also be over square bore and stroke configurations that would allow for higher revving. Harley started with the V4 800 cc in order to hopefully be competitive with Honda in the 750 cc class. The 800 cc Nova put out 80 horsepower which at the time matched up pretty close with the VF 750 S. This Nova was carbureted however fuel injection was also planned. A shaft final drive was also considered but Harley ended up going with a belt. As for the liquid cooling, the bike would need a radiator. At the time, Willie G was head of styling. He wanted the bike to have more of a clean look, so the radiator was installed almost horizontally under the seat. The fuel tank was a dummy that was actually an air box. A fan drew air through the dummy tank and to the rad. The fuel tank itself was also under the seat with the cap in the tailpiece. The Nova had a steel frame with a cradle design that used the engine as a stressed member. This meant that no traditional down tubes were needed to keep the bike's clean look. This also meant reduced weight in the chassis. There was a new frame mounted fairing that housed a radically styled instrument cluster. The tack, speedo, and clock were all different sizes laid out in an asymmetrical layout. The transmission was set to be a five speed and dual disc brakes in the front and a single disc in the rear provided the stopping power. Development went through the late 70s and into the very early 80s. There was a 15-man team at Harley in Milwaukee and 15 more engineers at Porsche. Testing the new model took place in both the U.S. and Germany. For privacy, the company even set up a private facility in Talladega, Alabama. As the companies kept their numbers down as to who was in the know, not much information escaped. And things were looking promising. The Nova had 120 mile per hour performance and was lightweight with good handling. It was heading for a launch date in mid-1981. V-Twin, V4, and V6 models were also planned for the future. Now, something else happened in 1981, the management buyout. 
this was when Harley execs bought back the company from AMF. It was a landmark event for Harley, but there was an issue. They were now heavily in debt. AMF, being the parent company, was the main source of capital for the project. Also, the company was not only developing the Nova, but also the Evolution engine as well. Harley-Davidson alone was now the main source of capital for development, tooling, and engineering. And unfortunately, a decision had to be made. In the end, the Evolution won out as it was the safer option. Still, Harley kept the project going for a little while longer, but eventually after 10 to $15 million invested and thousands of miles of testing, the project was abandoned. Now, it would have been nice for Harley to come out with a bike like the Nova back in the day. The company has always been accused of not being very forward-thinking. But on the other hand, I can't fault them for going with the Evolution either. That engine was a big winner for Harley. And it's hard to say if the Nova would have been accepted by customers at that time. When Harley came out with the liquid-cooled V-Rod years later, it was not all that popular and has since been discontinued. But not all was in vain, though. Porsche was said to have had a hand in some of the design of the Evolution engine and was heavily involved with the design of the liquid-cooled Revolution engine on the aforementioned V-Rod. Also, segments of the Nova's design made it to other models. For example, the fairing design ended up on the 83 Sport Glide, as did the hard clamshell-styled bags. One could say that the design of the Sport Glide was specifically derived from the Nova, albeit with an air-cooled engine. But what do you folks think? Should Harley have just gone for it and tried putting out the Nova? Or were they better off going the conservative route and just going with the evolution? Let me know in the comments. But anyway, that is it for today, folks, and we will catch you in the next one.